While most contestants present their best to the signature dish challenge, some miss the whole point of it. And this dish right here had Ramsey hurling his guts out as soon as his tongue touched it. Ramsey should be given a medal for sacrificing his health for our entertainment. I mean, some of these dishes are absolutely repulsive. Guess which dish had the great chef hurl his guts out? Like this. And hey, fair warning, don't watch this video while having dinner. Well, let's continue from where I left off, shall we? Okay. So this is the exotic tartare dish by Matt Siegel from season four. He was boasting to the cameras about how his dish was gonna rock Ramsey's world. And I think it did, but not in a way he was expecting. So what was so exotic about it, do you ask? It was a mind-boggling combo of raw venison, diver scallops, caviar, and, wait for it, grated white chocolate. Ramsey couldn't believe his ears and questioned if he was being punked. I mean, what were you smoking to come up with this combination? Man, I got secondhand embarrassment watching this. Oh, that was ruthless. Now, you'd think this would bring Matt's ego down a notch, right? Well, think again. Matt, bless his heart, couldn't comprehend what Ramsey found so repulsive about his creation. The poor guy was genuinely perplexed. To be fair, Matt, you put white chocolate on seafood. Like, white chocolate on seafood. Duh! Does that ring a bell, or should I ring it for you? But at least Matt cooked it through. Okay, how would you react if burnt meat, an apple burger, or a hairy lobster landed at your table? I'd lose my appetite right there and then. But when this contestant presented some wet pastry, Ramsey about lost it. So what happened is, in episode 10 of season 13, Ro and Aaron found themselves in the thick of it. In the intense heat of the Indian cuisine challenge, Ro was the third contender from her team to face down Ramsey's judgment, and she faced off against Bryant in the cod round. With anticipation building, Ro unveiled her phyllo-wrapped cod creation, only to be met with disappointment. Ro a chance to put the red team ahead with her phyllo-wrapped cod. The phyllo paste is wet. Yeah. Suck it. It's like eating a mouthful yeah. of wet. Like, seriously, a wet phyllo. Now, Ramsey's comparison to a wet tissue was harsh. Fair, but harsh. But at this point of the competition, he had high expectations from the contestants. And Roe clearly failed to make an impression. See, I guess. Two. But she wasn't the only one who failed the challenge. When it was time for Aaron to present his lamb dish, he was as confident as they come. Well, you have to see the brilliant dish he brought to the table. So having studied a little bit of Indian food, I did a date chutney inside of the phyllo. Oh boy. Inside the phyllo pastry, Aaron had tucked some date chutney with a little drizzle of mango powder on the top of the lamb. A bold move, but the judges had some equally bold things to say. The lamb is cooked very nice. Bizarre, the old uh, chutney inside phyllo pastry. Disaster doesn't even describe the half of it. I mean, the seeds and the dates and the peculiar phyllo stuffed chutney just failed to make an impression. But you have to give it to him. Well, he did come up with a really wild combination. Unlike this next contestant who was so overconfident that he ended up not cooking his dish enough. In season 11, episode 10, during the quinceanera planning challenge, John Scallion had a word with Michael Langdon, reminding him to ensure that his meat was prepared in time since the clock was ticking away. Determined, Michael took charge and prepared a steak dish, becoming the final contender from the blue team to present his creation up for judgment. He was up against Amanda Giblin, and Ramsey actually liked her dish. Michael, however, felt that his flavors were superior. But were they? Let's hear it. You know what they call that? Bald-faced lines. Upon closer inspection, it was evident that the steak was severely undercooked. Oh, the horror. Blood still lingered on the plate, signaling that the dish was far from being ready. While Michael insisted it wasn't blood, the truth was hard to ignore. I mean, what do you think this is? His dish was promptly criticized for its raw and undercooked state, much to Michael's frustration. I don't know about you, but this made me throw up, and I think I can't eat steaks for a few weeks now. Not exaggerating even a bit. And by the way, I had a field day learning about all the bacteria that raw meat is contaminated with. 
When ingested, they can make you really sick. Like, really, really sick. I am talking diarrhea, stomach cramps, vomiting, and a fever, as per the CDC. This can strike between 6 and 24 hours after eating raw, undercooked meat. And it lasts between 24 hours and many days, depending on the type of bacteria. So yeah, Chef Michael, for the sake of your family's health, I hope you're only taking over grilling duties whenever there's a barbecue. At least he didn't serve dog food to the judges <laughs> like this next contestant. Oh yeah, Sade's blunder will go down in Hell's Kitchen history as the most stupid mistake ever. You see, I get it. It was the dog show planning challenge, but Sade took it to the next level. I thought we were cooking for dogs. I mean, she actually believed that they were preparing food for the dogs. But you have to see her at work. The passion and commitment with which she crafted a <laughs> braised beef dish for her four-legged customers was remarkable. I've never done this before, but I guess it makes sense. As for Steve and Bryant, though, they were baffled. I don't know about fried anything for dogs. So they not making too much sense right now. It's crazy she never realized that she was the odd one out until she saw what everyone else had plated. And when Ramsay laid eyes on her braised beef concoction, well, Sade was doomed. What is that? Braised beef? Braised beef. <laughs> Am I the only one here? Or does that sound fucking ridiculous? It looks like a dog shat all over my plate. Yeah, no doubt that it was ridiculous. And with it looking like dog crap on a plate, Ramsay was no doubt disappointed too and the disappointment train kept on rolling, since fans were convinced that Sade had probably served the most embarrassing dish of all time. Moreover, what really annoyed viewers was the fact that she saw her entire team making dishes with prawns and pork chops, and yet, she still couldn't figure out they weren't cooking for the dogs. Well, on the bright side, at least we know what she feeds her pets now, and gotta say, they're eating good. Meanwhile, the blue team suffered defeat and were punished with setting up the dining room for the next service and grooming the dog sent over by the American Kennel Club. Well, I hope her dish was put to good use here, but Sade wasn't thrilled about how things went down and just wanted to get it over with. And spray all of these bitches, and I'm not talking about the dogs either. In fact, she was so fed up that she contemplated spraying the red team with a hose whenever they walked by. Somebody was having a bad day. Now it's time to meet Krissa Schmerler. She may have seemed kind-hearted, but let's just say Hell's Kitchen wasn't exactly her cup of tea. Spoiler alert, in the 14th season, she landed a not-so-impressive 18th place. So that should tell you a lot about her culinary expertise. She presented a ginger-crusted chicken breast during the signature dish challenge inspired by, wait for it, the cookie aisle at the grocery store. Yep, you heard that right. Ramsey couldn't help himself and covered his face, bursting into uncontrollable laughter. And guess what? The entire audience joined in, turning poor Chris's moment into an awkward laugh fest. Oh, the embarrassment. Ramsey couldn't help but make a cheeky remark. I mean, he couldn't even manage to swallow one bite. Clearly, that was an abomination, and she just scored one point out of five. To make matters worse, Krissa even told the cameras that she's not used to people spitting out her food. Honestly, I felt bad for her here. Tough break, Krissa. But what you served was simply inedible. Oh, by the way, this reminds me of something similar that happened in season 16, when Jessica Boynton nervously took her place as the eighth contestant against Andrew Pierce from the red team to face Ramsey's judgment. Little did she know that her risotto dish was about to take an unexpected turn. Ah, it's okay, chefs. Spit happens. I, I mean, shit happens. And this is no big deal in Hell's Kitchen, as each and every day turns out to be a learning experience. But this next contestant, who claimed to be a professional chef, served something that wasn't even edible. I'm talking about Josh from season three. In the Leftovers Challenge, Ramsey noticed Josh's newfound speed and determination. Despite the challenge about being working with leftover ingredients to make something out of nothing, Josh was confident in his team's abilities. When it was his turn to be judged, he presented his chicken leg with pea tendrils, only to face down an exasperated Ramsey. The chicken is not cooked all the way through. 
The sauce is disgusting. Yeah. And it is just... The acidic sauce and undercooked chicken certainly didn't impress. Especially not that they came from a so-called professional chef. So, how much did he score for his crappy dish? Disappointed in both of you. Zero for both of you. Back in line. Zero zip zilch nada. Absolutely nothing. But he wasn't the only Josh who screwed up on Hell's Kitchen. Yep. Season 14 introduced us to Josh Travato, and this dude ended up plating a revolting dish of his own in episode 7. During the Greek cuisine challenge, Josh, you know, I'm gonna call him Travato from now on, faced off against Allison, and their assigned dish for the day was lamb. In the midst of the plate-smashing chaos, he passionately shattered his first plate, only to be disappointed when he uncovered oranges. Let's go, Josh. Ah! Oh, damn. That sucks. Oranges, are you kidding me? With just 10 minutes left on the clock, he felt the pressure to speed up. As time ticked away, his worries escalated, and he feared his lamb wouldn't rest properly before being served. If my meat doesn't rest, it's gonna bleed out all over my plate. Come on, guys. When it was time for the judgment, he nervously presented his seared lamb with tricolored couscous, candied orange, and apple. Sadly, his efforts fell short. Like, way short. Candied orange and apple. What is the liquid? That is bloodshed. And that's not all. The dish was heavily criticized for resting atop a pool of blood because it hadn't rested properly. But believe it or not, that wasn't even the worst part. This is a, this is a one. A one. Both Ramsey and guest judge Michael Salakis refused to taste the dish, and he ended up with only two points, which, hey, is more than his fellow Josh got at least. But this time, someone decided to teach Ramsey a few things, and that's when we meet Miss Manners. That would be Colleen Cleek. Her misguided confidence and overpriced instruction made her infamous. And did I mention that she was a cooking instructor despite not being formally trained? I can almost hear the collective gasp and see the raised eyebrows in the room. And how much does she charge? I don't think you're ready for this. How much do you charge? 300 per three to four hours. Wait. What? So she's not a trained chef herself, but she charges that outrageous amount to teach what exactly? Does she mean people pay her for this? Her signature dish was smoked chicken enchiladas with poblano cream sauce, and it was an epic culinary fail. You can guess how bad it was when Ramsey says this. You seriously charge $300 to teach people how to make that crap? Needless to say, he wasn't impressed, and neither is the internet. Colleen, already in a precarious situation, struggled to keep her mouth shut but she couldn't resist the temptation and blurted out this. I teach manners too, chef. Oh God, the audacity. She really thought she owned GR, huh? But everyone's a gangsta until Ramsey says, Okay, please, Miss Manners, fuck off back in line. Obviously she couldn't, and a frustrated Ramsey told her to step back in line. Now, that's what I call a total disaster, folks. But this next chef got eliminated because she couldn't even cook Hell's Kitchen's staple dish. Yep, I'm talking about Janae from season 13, who, in a tale as old as time, couldn't make a risotto to save her life. In the heat of the dinner service, Janae held down the fort at the appetizer station alongside Ashley. However, her focus on perfecting her risotto left her oblivious to the chaos around her. She was completely tuned out when her team needed her most. Well, I'm asking Janae for f***ing times and I'm not getting any answers. 45 seconds. She was literally ignoring Deneen and Katie's pleas for a time check, which had to have been beyond frustrating for them. When she finally sent her risotto, I'm sure you can guess how well it went down. It's mush! Janae is overcooked! Whoa! Believe it or not, putting mushy risotto in front of Ramsey makes him angry! Imagine that! But that barely even describes it. Her dish was overcooked not just by three or five minutes, but by a whole ten minutes. I'm surprised the rice hadn't completely disintegrated by that point. And guess how her subsequent attempts turned out? It's liquid! Her, it down. It's too soupy! Her and the lobster's raw! Shocking. 
Anyway, amidst the tension, Rose stepped in, urging Janae to get her act together. With Rose's guidance, Janae finally communicated effectively with Deneen allowing them to send out their first table of appetizers. However, both teams ended up as joint losers for the night anyway. During the nominations, Janae found herself in the hot seat, acknowledging her initial mistake, but refusing to own up to the thousand other blunders she made afterwards. Ramsey, unimpressed, delivered the final blow, stating, cooking risotto is elementary, but tonight, I found out Janae is still in kindergarten. With that, her journey in Hell's Kitchen came to an end. Yep, couldn't make a risotto to save her life. Or, well, her spot in the competition, I guess. Speaking of disasters, remember this episode in Season 3 where Jen Yamola went dumpster diving? Yep, she retrieved the spaghetti she had thrown out in the garbage and proceeded to wash it. She almost actually cooked it again and claimed she would have served it too. That's easily one of the worst food offenses. So what happened is that Joanna Dunn was about to kill someone by serving rancid crab. So Ramsey threw her out and put Jen and Julia on the appetizer station. They were able to get some dishes out, but after she tossed out cooked spaghetti which she thought were not needed, what do you know? Ramsey asked for some on the very next ticket. In a panic, she grabbed some tossed spaghetti from the trash, but all thanks to Julia who stopped Jen dead in her tracks with absolutely no hesitation at all. At least someone was thinking straight. Indeed. Jen's lucky Ramsey didn't catch her. The comments on the Hell's Kitchen channel show how angry the viewers were. Some believe that she should have been 86th from the show after this incident. Others question that if she was willing to do this on camera, imagine what her hygiene standards are when nobody's watching. Yeah, food for thought, right? I can't understand what it is with all these contestants taking shortcuts. And here comes another one. You absolutely cannot cook a proper gumbo in 45 minutes. But Antonia Bregman from season 8 tried anyway. As you would expect, her Mardi Gras gumbo turned out to be a culinary catastrophe of epic proportions. When she proudly unveiled the dish to Ramsay, it was met with sheer shock and disbelief. Despite describing it as a plate of liquid shit, he bravely took a bite. What could go wrong, right? Well, everything. It was inedible. Even people on the internet are convinced that it must have tasted like actual shit or worse. And then this happened. Have you tasted that? No, I didn't get a chance to taste it, chef. Seriously? Who in their right mind wouldn't taste their own dish before getting it judged by Ramsay? That's a risky move in a high stakes competition like Hell's Kitchen. To add insult to injury, Ramsey decided to subject the rest of the contestants to Antonia's gastro adventure. If it wasn't already bad that he got sick. And now, he decided to share that misery with Antonia's competitors. To put it mildly, none of them were impressed. Rob took the opportunity to unleash his creative criticism, saying this. It was completely repulsive. I would have rather had a cat shit in my mouth then I've eaten that any further. Nona and Boris weren't faring any better, with the flavors threatening to send them over the edge. Even Vinny couldn't find any redeeming qualities, likening it to slurping down a big ol' bowl of mud. Easily one of the worst, most repulsive dishes served on the show. If hell is real, I am sure in the ninth circle, they make you eat this. Obviously, she earned no points, and Ramsey declared it as the worst dish of the day, leading the red team to lose the signature dish challenge. And what a way to lose a challenge. While scrolling through the net, I found this Reddit user by the name StreetCommunity922, who asked viewers a million dollar question. Between Matt from Season 4's Exotic Tartare and Antonia from Season 8's Gumbo, which was the worst signature dish in your opinion? The responses on the thread are hilarious, and an overwhelming number of them think that the answer's Matt. They say that Antonia at least had a concept that was executed horrifically. Matt's dish was awful, from conceptualization to execution. What do you think? Which dish would you rather taste? As for me, I'll just pass, thank you. But this next contestant took her obsession with apples to the next level. 
You see, just when Jackie was ready to plate chicken, sausage, and lamb, she decided to throw in apples for good measure. So in the holiday platter challenge, each team had to make three platters, each representing different holidays, and each of them had to feature three dishes apiece. With hot dogs, mac and cheese. 40 minutes on the clock, Jackie and Kristen teamed up to prepare the 4th of July platter. To spice things up, Linda Fears from Family Circle joined as a guest judge. Both judges had the power to award a point to their favorite dish on each platter. Plus, Ramsey dropped the bombshell that the winning team's best platter would get featured in an upcoming issue of the magazine. So let's check in on that 4th of July platter, huh? But one look at the dish and Jared had some serious questions. Is that a hot dog with apples on it? He couldn't believe his eyes when he saw a hot dog with apples on top. Like, there's Chicago style, and then there's whatever this is. But Jackie was confident. She presented her beer poached sausage with pickled red onion and apple. And the judge's reaction was one for the books. It isn't really working for me. Uh, not where they belong. Zero points. However, the criticism didn't stop there. Because her next dish was even weirder somehow. Burger with apple slaw. You got apple twice. Apple once again, and this time in a freaking cheeseburger. Okay, it's a little under there. Damn, I'm sorry. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm not gonna let you eat that. I'm sure it being raw didn't help, but I don't think it would have gotten any points if it'd been cooked to perfection anyway. However, Kristen stepped in with her grilled corn and jalapeno aioli, finally earning the team a point. Finally, we have some yes. flavor. Were there the points? Yeah. Well, who knew grilled corn could save the day? You grilled corn. But if you thought apples on random dishes was a weird combination, then you have no idea what this next dude had up his sleeve. In the pork creation challenge, Scott found himself in a bit of a pickle. He was the fifth person from the red team to select his pig, and he ended up with one labeled sweet potatoes. As they discussed their dish, he made some ridiculous suggestions. We're gonna do like a nice sausage and we're gonna garnish with prunes. Blood sausage and prunes, huh? Yeah, I'm not sold, and neither was Fran. Now you get to cook him. During the cook, Scott teamed up with Maria, and he swiftly took the reins, giving instructions to the woman. Kind of sit back and watch how everybody works. How are you guys doing over there on the prunes? You gonna try and fry them? What a charmer. And Siobhan was definitely charmed. I'd say take it out now, wrap it in foil, and let it rest. I say another minute. Do another minute then. Ramsey even called him out, questioning if he was trying to take over the red team. Scott claimed he was merely suggesting, but tensions continued to rise. And then came the moment of truth. The judges were blown away just by looking at it. I'm not pleased with the plate. That's why I don't look happy. I'm really, really not. Things got wild when the judges asked whose idea it was. Who in the chose prune with blood sausage? Talk to me, red team! Scott completely avoided taking responsibility. Oh, so now you don't want to be any part of it, huh, buddy? Fran and Nilka were pissed, to say the least. Anyway, Scott and Maria were the last pair from the red team to present their dish. A sweet potato soup garnished with ham hock. And the crowd goes mild. I asked for the ham hock as the main ingredient. And you're serving me a sweet potato soup garnished with a spoon? Unfortunately, they lost the round to Jay and Salvatore. The red team ended up losing the challenge one to two and faced the punishment of cleaning the pig pen outside and giving the pigs a bath, all while sporting farming attire. Man, that stinks, huh? But anyway, speaking of disgusting dishes, I think I'd spontaneously combust out of embarrassment if I had to present something as hideous as this. Wow. Props to Jen to stand there and take in all the criticism without hurling excuses because she had nothing to do with that lame-ass duck breast. That was all on Melissa Furpo. You see, what happened is during the wedding planning challenge in season three, Melissa proposed a change that left everyone raising their eyebrows. Instead of sticking with lamb, she suggested the women should go quackers and use duck as the main dish. Jen, being the cautious one, expressed concerns about cooking time but the team ultimately went with Melissa's decision because she was being very bossy about it. How I wish they didn't, but the damage was done. When it came to preparing the duck breast, Julia confidently decided to sear it. 
However, Melissa quacked in with a different idea, leaving poor Julia feeling a bit plucked. Not only that, Melissa also managed to throw a few feathers at Bonnie Moorhead along the way. It was enough to make anyone feel a bit ruffled, with conflicting instructions taking flight in the kitchen. Amidst all the squabbling, Julia took the duck breast out of the oven to let it rest. But in a moment of kitchen confusion, she accidentally placed it right back in to keep it warm. What followed was more squawking and bickering. Even Rock, with his keen ears, couldn't help but hope that the feathery argument between the Hell's Bietches would lead to their downfall. I mean, just look at him, you guys. So, as the cooking reached its crescendo, Julia and Melissa discovered their unfortunate truth. The duck breast was overcooked. But did Melissa take responsibility? Nope. When Ramsay asked both the teams if they were happy, the woman squawked in unison that they were not. Julia, pointing her culinary finger, blamed Melissa, claiming she had been acting like a kitchen dictator. Melissa, however, defended herself, asserting that she wasn't trying to juggle everything at once. Ramsay swiftly reminded her that he never appointed her as head chef, emphasizing that the challenge was all about teamwork. It was time to break free from those ducking egos. Th sorry, autocorrect. I think you heard it right, though. As the news broke that the wedding couple would be tasting their creations alongside GR, Melissa's feathers stood on end. She was horrified. Desperately trying to convince GR, dishes should be kept under lock and key. But GR turned a deaf ear to her concerns. The show must go on. It was a humiliating experience for the entire red team. And let's be honest, the blue team winning that challenge, ah, too easy. There was no competition at all. And well, Rock kinda already knew about this outcome, right? He was just as confident as Royce Wagner during the intense four ingredient challenge in season 10. The only difference being, Royce Wagner's confidence backfired. You see, Royce had set his sights on the luxurious lobster as the star of his dish. His masterpiece? A whole poached lobster infused with saffron and thyme. After taking a bite of his own creation, he seemed very convinced that it was freaking delicious. As the final blue team member to face the judges, Royce squared off against Christina Wilson. Little did he know, a hairy situation was about to unfold. Douglas Keane discovered this. A long hair lurking within the dish sent shockwaves of disgust through the room. An irritated Clemenza Caserta couldn't help but ask why anyone would dare to serve a hair-infested dish to a Michelin star chef. Yeah, pretty gross, right? Ramsay, never one to mince his words, demanded an explanation from Royce. Royce, perplexed and caught off guard, claimed innocence, insisting he had no idea how the hair found its way into his creation. But wait, there was more. Michael Simarusti, like a culinary detective, revealed that the lobster still had its not-so-appetizing shit sack intact. Yikes, there goes my appetite for dinner. Clearly, Royce's dish fell short of expectations. He managed to score only three stars, leaving the team astounded. Meanwhile, Kimmy, in a moment of pure disbelief, couldn't help but ask this. Royce just served hair and a shit sack to Michelin star chefs? Like, what the f are you thinking, dude? Same question, Kimmy. I have the same bloody question. Up next, though, is Michael Mike Aresta. And ah, uh, where do I even begin? He stepped up to the plate as the fourth contestant from the blue team in season 12. He faced off against Kashia, hoping to impress the discerning palate of GR. Little did he know, his dish was about to hit a rather cheesy bump. Mike proudly presented his creation, a plate of tortellini with tomatoes. However, when GR inquired about the filling for his tortellini, Mike's confession left everyone a bit shell-shocked. The interrogation continued as Ramsey pressed him about the tomato sauce. Mike reluctantly revealed that he had used canned tomatoes. Man, that's a lazy attempt. The disappointment in his eyes was palpable as he angrily tossed the dish into the trash, dismissing it as a joke. Can you even blame him? Gabriel couldn't help but question why on earth Mike would serve Ramsey packaged food. Yeah, anyone who knows Ramsey knows how much he hates canned food. I mean, it's an atrocity. Coming back, in this round, Mike's culinary skills fell short compared to Kashia's offering. 
leading to his defeat. His pride was wounded, and he couldn't fathom why GR would casually discard his dish as if it were packaged dog food. Voicing his frustration, Mike said, I'm a little insulted. It's not like it's packaged dog food. But Ramsey, never one to shy away from confrontation, swiftly called him up to the front, demanding an explanation for his outburst. Caught off guard, Mike found himself at a loss for words. Ramsey, not one to tolerate insubordination, made it clear that if Mike had anything to say, he should say it to his face, not behind his back. Continuing our love for spectacular dishes, I am sure you'll remember Moe's Pasta by Monique Booker from season 14. When Ramsay inquired about her marinara sauce, Monique confidently revealed her secret. You know the worst part? To everybody's annoyance, she didn't even think she was wrong to use pre-made sauce. Instead, she continued giving attitude to Ramsay. Wow. What a joke! To nobody's surprise, she scored only one point, and the red team eventually lost the challenge. Speaking of pre-made food, Kevin Ridland's Chicken Caesar Piadina comes to mind as well. Ramsey wasn't exactly thrilled with the concept. In his eyes, a salad on top of a pizza was a culinary crime. But the worst was yet to come. That's not all. The horrors continued to persist. In a moment of blunt honesty, Ramsey looked Kevin dead in the eye and asked if he wanted to go home. Ouch. I think he really meant it. His elimination in episode 5 is easily one of the most brutal in the show's history. What made it even more surprising was how he seemed to disappear into thin air after being pulled from mid-service. No closure, no exit speech, just poof and out. Now let's be real here, Kevin had his fair share of struggles in the kitchen. Those scallops were his kryptonite, even after Ramsey showed him how it's done. It's gotta be frustrating to see someone stumble on the basics, especially when they've been given a crash course by the big man himself. But here comes a contestant who repeatedly tried to mess up a dish only because it was someone else's special recipe. So Giovanni was holding down the fort at the meat station. With the final six orders piling up, he understood the stakes. Survival meant acing the entire service. Yet, he found himself repeatedly opening and closing the convection oven, catching Ramsey's attention. You keep on opening closing that door. In half an hour's time, you're going to be sorry. OK, chef. Okay. Then came the crucial moment. Giovanni sent up Ben's chicken special. And if those oven shenanigans were anything to go by, imagine how well it was cooked. I had to refire a chicken. I had him in the oven for a long time, but then they start to burn. What special chicken? All Ramsey could see was a drumstick that hadn't even gotten started cooking yet. I need the chicken! About one minute, chef. Meanwhile, Giovanni confessed he needed a minute for the refire, and openly admitted he had no clue how to nail the dish. Anyway, amidst the chaos, Ben remained steadfast. He knew that if he cooked his dish flawlessly, the entire dining room would walk out happy customers. The pressure was on, but Ben was determined to deliver perfection. On his next attempt with Ben's dish, disaster struck again. In this time, a chewed up drumstick made its way to the plate. Is that like a chewed up bit of chicken from the dog? Yeah, that's your special. Yeah, have a word with him, yeah? He's given up. You got hungry, I guess. Poor Ramsey was so beyond through with them. Hurry up, Giovanni. Yeah, but I'm not chef. <laughs> Recognizing the gravity of the situation, Ramsey decided to shake things up. He sent Ben over to the meat station to assist Giovanni with his own special, which definitely took the pressure up a notch. As the night ended and tensions ran high, Ramsey confronted him for being mentally absent from the competition. His poor performance and backtalk during the service led to his elimination, marking the end of his journey in Hell's Kitchen. And good riddance, I say. Now, when we talk about specialty dishes, you'd be forgiven for expecting something, you know, special. But sometimes, contestants surprise the judges with some really special stuff. For all the wrong reasons. And there's no better way to start off this list than with Giovanni. You see, this dude had been working in a steakhouse before Hell's Kitchen, so obviously you'd expect him to nail the steakhouse dinner service in season five, right? Blue team's gonna win dinner service tonight. I'm a chef at the steakhouse. I feel totally confident. I do this every day. Even as they prep for the service, he remarked how embarrassing it would be if they ended up losing, vowing to dedicate the evening service to Robert and his fiance, whose wedding day it would have been. Giovanni hustled to get those steaks out on the hot plate, but 
things took a turn for the worse when customers started complaining that their steaks were still wrong. As Carol brought them back, Ramsey wasted no time berating Giovanni for it. Touch it! Touch Ice it! Cold. Touch it! It's cold. The situation escalated as more and more undercooked steaks made their way back to the kitchen, and Ramsey was obviously not pleased about it. Yes, chef. Thank the fuck I've never visited your steakhouse. It's f***ing blue. Yes, chef. He let Giovanni know in no uncertain terms that this was becoming a complete and utter joke, and his teammates were equally frustrated. We have an executive chef of a steakhouse running our grill. Wake up, get it together, and put out some decent food. Giovanni! Yes, chef! Giovanni admitted his failure and mumbled that it sure sucked to struggle with cooking meat when he had plenty of experience under his belt. Ah, tell me about it. I have all the experience in the world running a steakhouse. It, it's just horrible, unacceptable by me. And it just sucks. And then in season 17, he failed his national specialty. He's Italian. And you'd expect him to win the Pizza Fusion Challenge, especially because he was so confident. They're going to go against the best pizza maker. You should have picked at least an Italian guy. In fact, everybody on his team was super confident that he'd wind up carrying the challenge. What's more, he was the lone chef who didn't have a partner assigned. And Ramsey generously gave him the freedom to join any pair he wished. Seizing the opportunity, he teamed up with Benjamin and... Well, his dish was chosen over the ladders as it had a better presentation. As a team, we picked Geo Pizza over Benjamin. We better have this one in the bag. He presented a white pie pizza with shallots. I mean, come on, just look at the thing. Flip that over for me, please. Yeah. No. Ramsey pointed out its burnt bottom, disappointed that the team didn't catch the mistake. Great concept, but Bagley badly executed. While the pizza tasted good, it got what it deserved for its poor execution, and Giovanni lost the round to Michelle. But was that near hat trick of screw-ups more embarrassing than what Kashia from season 12 had to go through? During the 160th sorority anniversary planning challenge, the Southern-themed menu got Kashia excited. I am from the South. That's all we eat every day, soul food. So I know we got this one. And she wasted no time in taking charge to showcase her leadership skills and demonstrate her expertise with Southern flavors. Kashia presented the Red Team's chicken entree and was the first to have her dish judged. Facing off against Jason, her dish featured classic fried chicken paired with mac and cheese, collard greens, ham, and hot sauce. Sounds Southern to me. While she got points for the collard greens and mac and cheese, it didn't hold up to Jason's dish, a crunchy double breaded leg and thigh with mushroom gravy and mashed potatoes, and a little cheddar cheese for good measure. I'm shocked right now. I thought the chicken was on point, but apparently it wasn't good enough. It's just very frustrating. So Kashio was responsible for the fried chicken station during service, working alongside Jessica. When Ramsey asked how long the chicken was going to take, she seemed confident, having fried chicken many times before. I cook chicken a hundred times. I eat plenty of chicken. Unfortunately, the initial batch turned out raw, and she asked for another two minutes to cook it properly, much to everyone's disappointment. Fried on chicken. To the her opening and closing the oven door over and over again prompted Ramsey to intervene and give her a quick lesson in basic thermodynamics. The situation escalated when she sent up undercooked chicken, leading Ramsey to angrily pull her and Jessica into the pantry for an explanation. It's pink and it's <laughs> raw. Both of you, come here. Yes, yes. Kashia was deeply embarrassed, and for good reason, considering how dangerous raw chicken is, and asked Jessica for her support. No, chef, I'm not. Chef, the breasts are this, it's only the breasts, like the group. Get them in early! Yes, yes chef. chef. Kasia had Jessica check the chicken, since Southern cooking held a special place in her heart. Unfortunately, Jessica brought up raw chicken again, despite believing it was cooked. Ramsey gave them a final warning threatening to send them both packing if they came up with more excuses. So, how many Southern cooks does it take to make fried chicken? Well, more than Jessica and Kasia, at least. But that reminds me. Devin also flopped during the Southern Cuisine Challenge in season 16. Man, I'm from the South. I am very comfortable with Southern food. Now, I really like the guy, 
Season 16's blue team was filled to the brim with awful people, and Devin was like a breath of fresh air. He had more talent than he was given credit for, but that didn't stop him from screwing this challenge up. He was paired up against Kimberly from the red team, and their task was to prepare a trout dish. During the cooking process, Devin suggested to Johnny that they use some spicy seasoning to give the dish a kick, and he was confident that they would absolutely ace the challenge. Go spicy? Yeah. Yeah, give it a little bit of spice. Right over like a sh shredded mash with onions and peppers, yeah? Mashed potatoes definitely sell, but make sure they're a garlic mash. Still. Garlic, cut, right? Still, Johnny's dish somehow ended up bland. When it was time for Devin to present his take on it, he offered up a trout with black-eyed pea succotash and corn bacon fried okra. The expectation was that he would shine, given his southern roots. However, the breading proved to be his undoing. In the south is everywhere, but these are overbreaded. Ramsey pointed out that this mistake made it difficult to distinguish the trout from any other fish, stripping away its identity. That could be any fish in there. With Devin not earning any points, the blue team fell short with a final score of two to three. So we're apparently gonna need more people than Devin, Jessica, and Kasia if we want some down-home cooking in Hell's Kitchen. But here comes a self-proclaimed pizza lover, Clemenza, who tanked the immigration lunch service challenge. Come on, hey, love pizza in my life. My family actually owned the pizzeria. Despite feeling right in his element, he served up a raw pizza, and that little misstep ended up stalling the entire blue kitchen. You should be able to nail a New York style pizza. This is a joke. Despite his Italian heritage, Italian night didn't go his way. But before I get to that, during prep, he hyped up the importance of the evening. And just coming through, baby. Stand back, step off, watch out. But he wasn't practicing what he was preaching with how he was brutalizing the chicken. Mr. Italiano takes it upon himself to pound the chicken breasts like this big. Sous Chef Scott was taken aback, as none of the chicken had been prepared that way the day before. Why did we do this? I don't know what to do. With it. I really don't. I have no idea. He f***ed them all, so I don't know what you guys want to do. Sometime later, Clemenza was assigned to the appetizer station alongside Barbie. As the service began, Ramsey emphasized that he was really counting on him. Yes, Chef. If there's ever a night for you to shine, yes, it's chef. tonight. Tonight is your night. Let's go. Even with Ramsey's words hanging in the air, he still couldn't be bothered to pay attention. What were the appetizers at that table, Clemenza? <laughs> Clemenza, what were the appetizers on I that table? I didn't hear it, Chef. An irritated Christina had to urge him to step up or step off, and Clemenza's troubles were only just beginning. Since he missed yet another call out, Ramsey even ordered Clemenza to call out the order himself. In the end, Clemenza was slow in picking the shrimp, and as a result, one of the tables was left hanging. It definitely was surprising to see Clemenza struggle like that, especially on Italian night. Not surprising why he was eliminated that episode. Moving on to the Mexican Cuisine Challenge in season 19, where both teams were tasked with elevating four classic Mexican dishes, tacos, tostadas, enchiladas, and chili relleno. This challenge was particularly intriguing because it brought together Mary Lou and Corey, the two finalists of the season, giving us the pleasure of witnessing a legendary team up. Corey's got the most experience out of all of us, and she got the most experience cooking Mexican food. They decided to take on the chili relleno and enchiladas, a promising pairing given Corey's Latin background and Mary Lou's Southern Tex-Mex flair. Her Southern Tex-Mex kind of flavor, my Latin background, dude, we're gonna be a dynamic duo here. Yeah, that's what everyone expected. Corey even mentioned how naturally this cuisine came to her, thanks to her grandma showing her a thing or two. This is what my, my bread and butter is, so it's definitely one that's, uh, <laughs> this is definitely one that I'm gonna, I'm gonna win for you, grandma, for sure. But to my surprise, and I'm sure everybody else's, they completely flopped, right in front of MasterChef judge, Aron Sanchez. And boy, was he not happy about it. Here's the deal, you can look at it and visually 
there's some there's some real issues with it. The guy had to see his culture and their culture completely massacred. It had no color, way too much cheese, and most damningly, the enchilada completely crumbled apart. While Aron did commend the mole sauce for its flavor, he couldn't help but mention how poor a fit it was for an enchilada. So it should come to nobody's surprise that they lost this round handedly, leaving Corey feeling pretty distraught. Well, sometimes things just don't work out, I guess. But this cultural butchering pales in comparison to what happened with Brett. Now, you'd expect everybody's favorite Italian to be able to make a perfect calzone in his sleep. But the International Cheese Challenge in Season 14 proved otherwise. He found himself facing off against T, who wasn't intimidated at all. And he's all like, I'm the fucking Italian, looking the tattoo on my chest. And Nick also wasn't convinced of his ability. Brett's so excited to get a calzone, and it's Italian, and he's Italian, we all get it. Prosciutto de Parma. Just shut up. It's really annoying. In spite of it all, though, Brett eagerly announced his vision for the perfect calzone. Uh, caprese uh, calzone with a little twist of prosciutto de Parma and soprasate. Then, with just eight minutes left, disaster struck. The bottom of his calzone was absolutely destroyed because of how thin his dough was. But hey, Brett wasn't ready to give up just yet. He quickly switched gears, moved his tasty filling into a fresh dough base, and popped it back into the pizza oven, hoping for a comeback. When it was finally time for Ramsey to taste his dish, Brett proudly presented his take on a traditional calzone. It had roasted peppers, heirloom tomatoes, and pomodoro cheese. Ramsey liked the flavors inside, but he couldn't let the raw dough slide. The chef underneath. That is raw, and it's too bad, because had that been in for another two minutes, then you'd be leaving Hell's Kitchen for an amazing day. I imagine nobody's gonna be surprised when I say T ran away with this round. No? Good. Now, do you remember Kimmy always saying, I'm from the South, I grew up in the hood, I'm from Memphis, Tennessee, only to be eliminated on Southern Night? During the challenge, she was even bragging about it. I got a banging ass plate, man. I know Brian's about to go down with my plate. Uh. When her turn came, she confidently presented her creation, an oregano panko crusted pork chop accompanied by creamy grits and infused with sauteed bacon and Monterey cheese. However, Ramsey didn't find a lot of value in how dull it was. Ramsey always gives me criticism on my plating. Dude, just taste the shit. Surprisingly, despite the rocky start, her dish still managed to earn praise for its delicious grits. So much so that they carried her to a win against Brian. As the Southern Night dinner service kicked off, she found herself at the fish station. If there's one person that should be absolutely key to the success of the red team tonight, it should be you. Um, that didn't happen. Despite this. Super stoked for tonight because this is what I do every day of my life. But yet, I'm nervous. First, she served up burnt catfish, in spite of both how easy it is to cook and how much it was in her wheelhouse. It's supposed to be from the South. You cannot cook. Period. This is She struggled with the refire, too. Oh, whoa. She even hit another snag when an oil bubble popped in her face, which uh, I can at least empathize with. Despite the burn, she managed to get the refire accepted. However, due to her earlier mistake, the red team had fallen behind. To make matters worse, her catfish dishes on this round ended up both raw and burnt, a double whammy that destroyed what little was left of Ramsey's sanity. Come here, you. Let me show you something. I've got raw, raw catfish there. Oh. Then there's burnt He was trying so hard to hold back tears there. You hate to see it. Oh, I could cry. I could just, I could just cry. Oh. Stop. Now, in season nine, Krupa absolutely butchered her signature dish, traditional Gujarati stuffed naan. Ramsey's reaction was swift, exacting, and brutal. And he started with how unappetizing it looked. It's like you've got four bits of on a plate, splat. <laughs> And that moniker carried over into her flavors, too. The spices in the dish were completely raw, which led Ramsey to call it this. Raw, bland, my dear Cooper. Yeah, that is crapper. 
Oh god, that was brutal. Like, I don't even know what else to say here. Though, that does remind me of the time Van was assigned to lead the fish station in season 6. Given that he was a fish cook, it should be easy peasy lemon squeezy, right? Well, you've made it this far into the video, so I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you that it was stressy, depressy, lemon zesty. Even in the previous service, he served raw halibut. Not once, but twice. And he wasn't about to redeem himself here. First, he was caught searing a sea bass instead of focusing on cooking the scallops, which blew up in his face. Listen to me! Yes, sir. But we haven't even sent the appetizers. Here we go again. New night. Yeah, Ramsay wasn't ready to let him off the hook so easy after that little outburst. I'm watching you like a whore. I'm eagle over you. I understand. The pressure seemed to get to Ben, and he began to struggle with the scallops. Come here. You're sweating in the food. Yeah. yeah. I know it's f***ing hot. You're sweating in the food. Yeah, Ramsay went for a complete order reset, causing a huge backlog of tickets and very little food to be served. And Ramsay wasted no time in pinning it all on Van. As the service continued, Van's troubles persisted. But I'm dragging a f***ing halibut. Three minutes, chef. The pan's not even hot. It's not even sizzling. Van. He was caught dragging a halibut in a pan that wasn't even hot which obviously led to raw halibut to be sent to the pass. Believe me when I say that Ramsey was done. Oh. I keep letting him down. He sent Van to the pantry for a glorified timeout, and it came with a stern warning. One more mistake, and he could be ejected from service. And the kitchen struggled without Ramsey and sous chef Scott. Yeah, they walked out. And Van found himself needing to fend for himself, with Suzanne refusing to help plate dishes. When Ramsey and sous chef Scott returned, it was time for somebody to leave the kitchen. And yep, that someone was Van. And following right behind him were Suzanne and Ariel. Whew, what an end that was. However, in season 11, Dan mistakenly believed that he had an advantage in the Chinese dish creation challenge because of this. I lived in Asia for a year. I am getting my jack back today. Big risks equal big rewards. Oh yeah, he was on probation and had to earn back his jacket. But I can't help but wonder, where in Asia did he live? Japan? China? Russia? Now, just because he lived in Asia for a year doesn't mean he's a master of the cuisine, but Dan was confident. This is not gonna be hard. These ingredients pick themselves. I can't f this up. So confident, in fact, that he somehow managed to undercook rice, like the bedrock of all Asian cuisine. Now, in the initial part of the challenge, his enthusiasm grated on Ray, as he incessantly questioned which ingredient should go where. Dan, he's asking me a lot of questions. I thought you went to Asia. Why are you f***ing asking me? Good point, though. Anyway, it was during the second part of the challenge when Dan was tasked with responsibility over the fried rice. As the first member of the blue team to have his dish judged, he was convinced that his extensive time in Asia would secure his victory. I'm getting my jacket back right now. Because I lived in Asia for a year. What do you eat while you live in Asia for a year? Asian food. He finally presented a dish of fried rice with mushrooms, coconut milk, peanuts, and sweet and spicy prawns. While the presentation was decent, there was a significant issue. The rice a little bit undercooked. Chinese rice should never be undercooked. That is simply embarrassing. In the end, Dan lost the round to Jacqueline, and Anthony couldn't resist a playful jab. Hey Dan, go back to Asia for another year. And rightly so. Now, if you can think of some more really uh, special specialties, don't forget to drop them in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. Also, don't forget to check out my latest video right here. It's even crazier.